Hey everyone, it's Tracy, and welcome to the next in the series of editable text effects in the Affinity Suite. In this one, we're going to use Affinity Photo to create an ink bleed effect like this one using live displacement and blur filters, as well as blend options and texture. Now, because it's editable, you'll be able to change the font, the size, the text itself, and the effect will remain intact because everything that we're adding is non-destructive. Now, I'm using the desktop version of Photo, but the process is the same for the iPad version. So as long as you know where the tools are located, you'll easily be able to follow along. I should note though, that the filters we'll be using are only available in photo. So let's get started. I've created a 3000 pixel square document and I've set mine to 300 DPI. I plan to save this as a template so that I can reuse it over and over. And just in case I want to print it, I've set it to 300 DPI. If you know you're not going to print yours, 72 DPI will be just fine. In fact, it creates a smaller file size. I'm going to set the background texture first and I want to use some paper texture from texturelabs.org. I've linked all of the textures I'll be using in this tutorial in the description below. Now, instead of using the place option to pull it in, I'm going to use the gradient tool set to bitmap so that I can easily swap my texture out, move it around and scale it up and down. So I need something to add that bitmap to. So I'm gonna start with a rectangle. I'll choose my rectangle tool. And since I'm on a desktop version, I can command click and it's going to give me this dialog box. I want to add a 3000 pixel square. So I'll just click okay. And it's white, so you can't see it, but we're about to fill it. I'll just center this up first and go right to my gradient tool. I wanna to choose the bitmap as my type and it'll take me to my files and I'll choose this Texture Labs Paper 316. And I want to scale this up. I'm gonna hold the shift key down just to keep it locked into place like that. And then I'll drag it to the right because I like the little paper fold in the top corner. All right, so again, I can always swap this out. I can scale it up and down and move it around because I use the gradient tool rather than placing an image file. I'm just gonna lock this into place so I don't accidentally move it. And now we're all set to add the text. I'm going to use a nice thick font like Impact because it shows both the texture and the ink bleed effect really well. But go ahead and experiment with your favorite font just to see what you like best. I've selected my artistic text tool and I've chosen impact as my font. I'll just start dragging out a letter. I don't want to go too large with my words because I need room around them for that ink bleed effect, but I'll start here. I can always size this up and down if I need to. Just type ink bleed and I'm going to change the first three letters to this dark red color and then center the entire thing up on the canvas. All right, so one final thing that I want to do to this is turn it into a group. So I'll select the layer and I can either use Command G to turn it into a group or I could right click on the layer and choose it in here in the list. Now I'm doing this for a couple of reasons. The first is I'm about to apply a blend option adjustment to help pull the paper texture through the text, but I don't want to apply it just to the text, but to the filters as well. When I add that blur, I don't want it to look like it's just a blur sitting on top of textured text that won't look very realistic. So in order to do that, I need to apply the blend option shift to the group layer and not just the text layer. The other reason is that I don't want any of the blurs that we're going to add to impact the paper beneath it. So in order to protect that layer, we're going to keep everything within this group. So I'm going to select the group layer and choose this cog shape, that's blend options. If you're on the iPad version, select your group layer and tap the three dots at the top of the layers panel, you'll see blend options at the bottom. Now I'm not going to do a full tutorial on using blend options here. I have an entire tutorial dedicated to it in designer. The process is exactly the same in photo. So I'll link that above and in the description. For the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to focus on this graph on the right underlying composition ranges. That's going to allow us to either pull the light or dark areas of the underlying texture through. So since this is a darker color, we're going to start with this right node. This is going to help us pull the highlights from the paper through. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see what's happening. So I'll click and drag this down 
And as I do that, you can see the light parts of the texture start to come through and the overall text is sort of fading. Let's stop right about there. Now I don't want to lose that paper texture, but I need to pull some of the darker areas back. So I'm going to click on this left one. I'm going to keep it along the top. I don't want to pull it down at all because it's going to fade the text even further. I'm just going to pull this to the right until it starts to bring it back. Be careful not to go too far. You'll lose the texture completely. So I'll bring it right to about there. And then I'm going to do one final thing. I'll turn off linear and add a node between these two. This is going to allow me to play with the midtones. I'm just going to drag this up a little bit and right about there. So I'm going to test out one final thing. I'm going to go into my text and I'm going to change the text to multiply. That's going to give us one final boost to pull that texture through. So you're going to apply the blend option shift to the group layer and then change your text layer to multiply. So I like this texture. I love how it's coming through the letters. The problem is the edges are too perfect. If this was real ink, it would sort of be bleeding into that paper. And this is where one of my favorite filters in photo comes in, the displace filter. Displacement maps can be applied destructively to a rasterized layer, or in our case, non-destructively as a live filter to a non-rasterized layer like our text. That's what's going to allow us to keep it editable. I want the displacement filter to be applied to the text layer, so I'll select that. And once I add it, it's automatically going to add it within the group. I can engage it either by going up to layer, down to new live filter layer, distort and displace, or I can go to the bottom of my layers panel and choose displace. Either way, it's going to give me a separate layer within that group and this dialog box is going to come up. Now what this is asking me is, where do I want to pull my displacement map from? In other words, where am I going to get the file that's going to help break this text up? I can either use the layers beneath, in other words, I can use this paper texture, or I can load a map from an external source. The problem is because we're keeping everything within this group to protect that paper layer beneath, if I choose that as the option, it's not going to give me the effect that I want. In fact, it creates sort of a solid line around it. Instead, I'm going to pull my file from an external source. I'm going to choose load map from file and I'll select this Texture Labs Paper 166. It's automatically going to apply a 10 pixel displacement to it. And that's just a little bit too much. So I'm going to key in five and maybe four just to see where it's at. All right, I think I'll bring that back up. You can also go the other direction. I don't want it to be so much that it looks fake, but I want it to be enough that it looks broken up around the edges. I like this. I'm going to leave that as is. This is a non-destructive filter, so I can always double click on the icon here and pull this back up. But for now, I'll just go ahead and close it. All right, we're ready to begin adding our ink bleed effect, and we're going to do that by using a field blur filter. Now, just like the displace filter, field blur is available as both a non-destructive live filter and a destructive filter that can be applied to a raster. Again, we wanna stick with the live filter so that our text remains editable. Field blur is going to allow us to set points of blur and focus around our design. Now I'm going to show you the basics of how it works first and then show you the easiest way to apply it to this text effect to get the ink bleed. So in this particular case, I want to select my displacement map rather than my text layer. The reason that I want to do that is I want the field blur to sit above it. Sometimes the displacement map can cause weird artifacting with the blur. So to avoid that, I'm going to make sure that the field blur is added above. I'll go down to my live filters and choose field blur. And that's going to bring up this dialog box in addition to this control point. Now we'll get to the dialog box in a minute, but first let me show you when you want to add control handles, you can just click to add them anywhere on the canvas. To delete them, select them, and you'll know it's selected because it's a double circle rather than a single one, and just hit delete. Now, one thing I want to note is you want to do it that way, not use Command Z. When you do that, it gets rid of everything that you just did. All right, so let's take a look at the handles here. 
The first thing you'll notice is that currently there's no blur whatsoever, and that's because global radius, which controls the blur across the layer, is set to zero. As I begin to drag that up, it's going to change the blur overall, and I'll bring that all the way up to 100%. Now this second level here impacts whatever handle, whatever control handle is selected. In this case, we only have one on the canvas right now, so it's going to impact this one. As I drag this down, you can see it's removing the blur because it's saying I have 0% of that 100 pixel blur affecting this control handle. So I'm gonna drag that up again. Now this handle here is going to have absolutely no impact right now. And that's because there's no other control points on here. So let's add some. For the ink bleed effect, I want it to be on the outer edges of my letter so that it looks like the ink is bleeding out into the clean paper. So I'm gonna add some on the corners here of these two letters. I'll add one to my B, add them between my E's and then here to my D. Now I want to select this handle again, because again, we're going to use this as our main control point. Now watch what happens when I pull this slider down. It's going to get rid of the blur around that control point, but it's keeping the blur in place for the others that I added. That's where this third handle comes in. But here's the thing, the third handle is kind of strange. It works opposite of what you would expect. If you read the wording, it's selected handle power. So you would think that as I drag this up, it's going to push the areas of focus out so that overall it's more focused than blurred. But if I do that, watch what happens. The blur actually comes in instead. If I go the other direction though, it begins to push the blur towards the other control handles. So I don't know why it works that way. Just keep that in mind whenever you use fill blur, whether it's on text like this or on an image, this particular lever works opposite of what you might expect. Now that I have that in place, now that I've pushed that out to those edges, I'm going to go into each individual one and adjust those. So I'll select this one. Whoops, I accidentally added one. So I'm just gonna hit delete. I'm gonna pull this one out. I want it to look like it's sort of bleeding out into the paper more. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the other one. I like how the E looks. I'm going to leave that one alone. I think for the B, it might have a little bit too much going there. So I'm going to change the handle power. But again, remember, go opposite of what you would expect. So I'm going to drag that up and just kind of knock that down a little bit. And then for my D, I think I'll just move it down and maybe out a little. I'm going to add two more. I'm going to zoom in here. And one thing I would recommend is because this handle especially impacts all the other handles, use it very slowly. Don't go too fast. Keep an eye on the other ones so that you make sure that you're not impacting areas that you don't want. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to add one right here and I'll bring the blur of that up. I want it to look like it sort of got a little bit wet here and it's bleeding just slightly. Now, if I start to drag this down, but I go too quickly, you can see I'm blurring a lot of this and I don't want that. I want to maintain that focus of the blur right there. So I'm gonna bring that up and I'll just bring the power up a little bit more. So just move very slowly and keep an eye on what you're doing. I think I'll add one, maybe right here, I'll do the same thing. Again, I'm just gonna bring my power up. Now it's impacting here. I don't necessarily want that. So I'll drag this up to pull it away from there. And I can always bring the power up a little bit. These are so close, it's going to impact it a little bit. So you might just have to compromise, but I think that looks good. I feel like this might be a little too much. Now you can see I closed the dialog box, but because this is non-destructive, I can just double click and it pulls that right back up. It also pulls the handles back up. I'm going to get rid of that. I don't actually like that. And I feel like this one might be just a bit too much. So I'm just gonna bring it down and maybe change the power of it just a touch. 
All right, I like the ink bleed effect overall. I want to do one final thing with my text and that's just break up the inner parts of it a little bit more with some texture. So I'm going to select my text layer. This is completely optional. You don't have to do this if you don't want. I'm going to select inside selection and go to my place option and I'll grab that other texture I have here and just drag it out. I want the white areas of that texture to show through the letters. So I'm going to take the blend mode and change it to screen and I'll just drop the opacity. I don't want it to be too obvious, but just enough that it looks like it's weathered text. Now that I'm looking at it, I feel like this one is just a little too much. It's kind of hard to read the bleed part. Keep in mind, if you're doing text effects, you want your text to be readable. So be very careful about the edits that you add to it. So I'll just double click in here, select that one, and I'm just gonna bring the power down a little bit. All right, so I have my text in place but this is editable, which means I can change this at any time. So I can go into my text layer and choose my text and maybe change this to spot. When I did that though, the first thing you'll notice is that my blurs are all off. But because this is editable, because this is a non-destructive filter, I can double click in here. I can delete any of my blurs. I can hit reset and start fresh or I can just start dragging them back to where I want them. It's all up to you. So I think I'll just drag that one there. Maybe bring this down here and keep that one there. That's our control. And I think everything else looks good. I mentioned earlier that I'm going to save this as a template and I'm going to do that instead of saving an AF photo file. The reason that I'm doing that is because I really like this design and I may want to use it in the future but change the font and the words and some of the effects. If I save it as a template, when I open it, it's going to give me a clean copy, but maintain the original. So I can make any of my changes. I can save this as a new template or as an AF photo file and the originals left untouched. Now, one thing to note about saving as a template is that it saves the layers as they are right now. So it takes a snapshot of all of your layers and all of your effects but it doesn't save any of the prior versions. So in other words, any changes you made throughout the life of this document. If you need that history for some reason, you might consider saving an AF photo file. You can still save it as a template that if you want, but just keep in mind the AF photo file is what's going to give you that versioning. In order to save a template, go up to file and down to export as template. From there, it's going to work just like saving any other file. It'll ask you to name it, and put it into a file somewhere. To open it, go up to new and you'll see templates here. Now I have my text effects templates in a cloud file named text effects, which I've used this to link to. That allows me to select any of these and open them. And again, it's going to give me a clean copy to work with. An additional benefit of templates is that I have them at my fingertips, both here in the desktop and the iPad versions. And because I've saved them in a cloud file, I can also pull them into any of my apps. So I'd love to know what text effect would you like to see as part of the series? Can you see yourself using this ink bleed effect in your own designs? Let me know in the comments below and please don't hesitate to ask any questions you may have. If you've enjoyed what you've learned here and like my teaching style, consider checking out my full length classes where I share more detail on many of the tools I use here on YouTube. I've linked both my Skillshare channel and my own learning site, The Creator Collage, below. I have lots more tutorials coming up, so be sure to subscribe. In the meantime, you might want to check out one of these two next. Thanks for watching.